Instagram. 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 As Instagram's parent company Meta announced its first ever drop in revenue. They analyze and package the data and sell it to businesses and advertisers. Instagram and had a secret account sharing self-harm and suicidal thoughts. Let's face it, Instagram is a messed up place. It is designed to be addictive. Have you ever thought about the tactics they use to keep you ensnared on their platform for hours? The more time you spend on the app, the more money the company makes. But how does Instagram actually do it? To truly understand this, we need to travel back to its origins, where it all began. Instagram was created by Kevin Systrom and Mike Krieger and launched in October 2010. The service rapidly gained popularity with over 100 million active users as of April 2012. That same year, American company Facebook Inc., now known as Meta Platforms, acquired the service. Today, Instagram is a free photo sharing application and social networking service that enables its users to take pictures and share them online. It was originally conceived as a way for Systrom and Krieger to share their photos with each other. However, they soon realized that the service had a much wider appeal and decided to open it up to the public. Instagram quickly became popular with users all over the world and today is one of the most popular social networking platforms. Of course, at the time, nobody had any idea that very soon, Instagram would become one of the most profitable apps in the entire world. However, even with their growth, there have been a lot of negative aspects to the platform that people don't often talk about. It has been reported that Instagram collects data on what users are interested in and then sells this information to companies that want to target ads at specific types of people. For example, if you're interested in fitness, Instagram might sell your data to a sports company so that they can show you ads for their products. This is how Instagram has been using the private data of its users to make money. Instagram also does sponsored posts, where a retailer pays Instagram to feature their product, or through product tags, where a retailer pays Instagram to allow users to click through to their website from an Instagram post. This is how Instagram does partner deals, which generates great amounts of revenue for the company. They do this by striking deals with retailers, where they get a percentage of sales made through links on Instagram. But that's not all. Instagram also has a tracking code it injects into websites to track users' activity. This code is used to track the user's interactions with the website, including when they click on ads. This tracking code allows Instagram to collect data about the user's web activity, which can be used to target ads and content to them. This code also tracks the user's activity across different websites. This data can be used to create a profile of the user's interests and activities, which can be used to target ads and content to them. Instagram has been criticized for doing this, collecting and using user data to target ads. The company has access to user data such as location, age, gender, and interests. This information is also used to target ads to users. Because of these tactics, the founder and managing partner of Bradley Grombacher LLP, Kylie Grombacher, even filed a class action lawsuit on Facebook and Instagram parent company Meta. Kylie executed this action on behalf of all Apple users that had continuously complained of the company still tracking their various activities on their iPhones even after they had already opted out of user tracking. PR Newswire's Sishin revealed that the lawsuit claimed that even when users didn't agree to be tracked, the Meta company still goes on to track all their online activities with external third-party websites. This is really an evil style of approach performed by the Meta company and something needs to be done before it gets out of hand. But that's not all. There are still more shocking strategies Instagram has devised in trapping people. It has been reported that Instagram is somewhat designed in a way so that new content is constantly being fed to users. When we see something pleasant, our brains release dopamine, which encourages us to keep scrolling. This constant cycle of scrolling and dopamine release can quickly turn into an addiction. So, Instagram uses the dopamine principle to keep people scrolling through their feeds. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that plays a role in pleasure and reward-seeking behavior. When we do something that feels good, dopamine is released in our brains. This reinforces the behavior, making us want to repeat it. And due to this, the more time people spend on Instagram, the more ads they're exposed to, which means more money for the company. So it's a win-win for Instagram. They keep people addicted to the app and those people generate revenue for the company. Now, we all know that the platform can be used for good, to connect with friends and family or to follow inspiring accounts. However, the evil it can be used for is more dangerous than the good. So if you feel you've gotten addicted to the platform, well, you will be surprised to know that you can still gradually get over it.
One such way to do this is by going on dopamine fast. This type of fast involves abstaining from all forms of pleasure for a set period of time. The goal of a dopamine fast is to reset your brain's pleasure center so that you can appreciate the simple things in life. If you're interested in trying one, it's important to be prepared for the challenge. A dopamine fast can be difficult to stick to, but the rewards may be worth it, mainly to get rid of your addiction to Instagram. While addiction may not seem like an evil thing, it can still have very harmful effects on our mental and physical health. Instagram has not just been capitalizing on our mental health struggles, but also exasperating them. The platform has been criticized for promoting unrealistic beauty standards and a culture of comparison and competition. And while Instagram has made some changes in response to these criticisms, such as banning filters that give users artificial skin, nothing seems to have changed as people are still affected by other features on their platform. This is how Instagram has been affecting many people's mental health state. There's no denying that social media can have a negative impact on our mental health. The constant stream of images and videos can make us feel like we're not good enough or that we're missing out on what everyone else is doing. And while it's important to be aware of the impact that social media can have, it's also important to remember that platforms like Instagram are businesses and they're designed to keep us coming back for more. One way to do this is by algorithmically curating our feeds to show us content that will keep us engaged. That might mean showing us posts from people we follow who rarely post or post with a lot of likes and comments, but it also means showing us ads. As a result, researchers found that the more time young adults spend on social media, the more likely they are to report experiencing symptoms of depression. Too much time spent on social media has been linked to increased levels of anxiety, depression, and loneliness. It can also lead to cognitive decline and sleep problems. PR newswire Glamour also revealed that, on average, people spend 85 to 101 times a day checking out their smartphones. The post also showed that in 2019, a global average of 2 hours 23 minutes was spent daily on social media and 53 minutes out of these calculated time was spent majorly on Instagram. So it's important to be aware of the negative impact that Instagram can have on mental health and to take steps to protect yourself from it. If you're feeling lonely, anxious, or depressed, limit your time on social media, including Instagram. Seek out professional help if you need it and talk to your friends and family about how you're feeling. And there's no need for panic. Instead, here's what you can do to protect yourself from the evil economics of Instagram. First, be aware of the effect that Instagram can have on you. If you get lost in the rabbit hole of endless scrolling, it's time to take a break. Second, don't believe everything you see. Just because someone is paid to promote a product doesn't mean that it's the best thing out there. Do your own research and make sure you're getting the best value for your money. And third, don't be afraid to unfollow accounts that are constantly trying to sell you something. If all they're doing is trying to make a quick buck, they're maybe not worth your time. We all know that feeling. You're scrolling through your feed and you see an ad for a new product that you just have to have. But before you know it, you've spent hours browsing through photos and videos of people using the product and you're convinced that you need it in your life. This is the power of Instagram marketing and it's not just businesses that are cashing in on it. Even regular users are making money by posting sponsored content. This constant stream of visually appealing content is designed to keep you coming back for more, which makes Instagram so addictive. And the more time you spend on the platform, the more likely you are to see ads and sponsored content. But here's the thing. Most of us are not immune to the power of marketing. We see an ad for a new product and we want it. We see a photo of a beautiful model using that product and we're convinced that we need it in our lives. The main reason for this constant showcase of new products is that Instagram is making money off of us. They're selling our attention to businesses, and we're the ones who are paying the price. Instagram might only be wishing trouble for themselves with these evil schemes in years to come, but that doesn't mean they're the only ones taking the loss. BlackRock, for instance, is one of the biggest investors of Instagram's parent company, Meta, and to see their platform getting crushed in the market is not what this investment management company CEO, Larry Fink, wants. But if Meta believes they can keep BlackRock on their investor list even when Instagram is in a difficult position, they're sadly mistaken, as they'll be shocked to know how Larry Fink operates and makes cutthroat decisions almost every day. Since Larry Fink is considered as the most powerful man in finance, this is bad for Instagram because if any decision is taken by Mr. Fink against a social media company, then the future of Instagram can be in severe jeopardy.
In the past, Larry Fink has already made some similar decisions which always bankrupted the target company. He was also a huge part of the 2008 financial crisis, which brought the deepest recession in the country since World War II. But how was he involved, and why? I know you want to know more about this, so just click the video right here.